one of our main concepts is that we should try and keep our formulas as simple as possible. We prefer that you use more rows and columns than less. But if you really want to nest formula, and in some cases, and we'll show you just now a case where you need to use it, you may want to know a nice quick way to build nested formulas. So in this example, what we've got is we've got some data and you'll see that it's split by this hash and we've split it up. Now in this case, we've gone and done it column by column. So that first column finds the hash. The second column is pulling out that section. The third column finds where the second hash is. And the fourth column then pulls out this middle section. And you'll notice that each, each of these have their own formula in. Although we don't recommend it, if you need to combine the formulas, we're going to show you how you can easily first create it in this way, in a, with simple formulas, and then combine it so that we're only left with these two formulas. Let's first look at this one here. So you'll see we've, we find the first hash, there's a find function, and you'll see it looks at A12, the cell over here, which is the raw data. When I come here, you'll see I've got a left function, and one of the references is A12, the text, but the other reference is C12, the cell here. So what you can do with Excel is if a formula refers to a cell that's got a formula in it, you can just as easily replace the reference C12 with what's in here. So what I'll do here is I'll go in here, notice I'll copy just that section, I'll leave the equal sign out, so I'll copy it and I escape just to get out of this. I'll go back in here and now I double click on C12. So where Excel used to look here and I paste, I now paste in the formula that used to be there. When I click enter, it should show that and I can copy it down. That was a relatively easy one, and we could, in theory, delete this column now, but I just want to do this one first. So then we've got a second find, where we're trying to find the second hash, and you'll see in this one, again, it looks at A12, the raw data, and but here it looks at C12, so it is looking at this cell. You've then got a function, a mid function, that again looks at this cell here, and then it looks at various combinations of these cells. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this formula into one big formula. And the way to do this, so A12 of I know is the text, so I'm going to leave it as is. It says C12 plus 1, I go to C12, I copy what I see in there, copy it, escape, come back here. And wherever I see C12, so I see it there, I paste, and I see it over here, I paste. If I look at this formula again, I can see A12 is fine, it's the text, A12, A12, but then I've got an E12, here's E12, I'm going to come here, go here, I copy it again, remember there's no equal sign included, escape, and I put E12, notice this one had C12 in it, so what I'm going to do is go back to C12, copy what's there and replace it there. So now the formula looks quite complex but if you look through it, it only ever makes references to the A12. When I click enter, you'll notice I get the same answer. I'm going to copy it down. And the benefit of this now is I can delete that column and that column because I've taken four simple formulas and made it into two more complex formulas. But again, I can't emphasize enough. We prefer if you keep it separate, in separate columns, nice simple formulas. There are, however, some cases where you have to nest the formulas. So here what you've got is I've got a, a quite a complex if statement I need to do. So you'll see we've got bank balances over here, and we now know that if we've got less than minus 10,000 in the bank, the bank only will charge us 15%. If we're between minus 10,000 and zero, they charge 10%. If we're bigger than zero, they charge 6%. Now, 
Now firstly, f is not the best function to use for this, but we are going to use it in this case. The correct function would actually be a VLOOKUP. You can, we'll cover that later in the, in the courses. The first thing you should always do with a complex formula that you're going to nest is actually draw a picture. And you'll see I've drawn it here. So I've said if the balance is less than minus 10,000, what must happen if it's true? It must be 15%. If it's false, then I've got another test. Is the balance less than zero? If that's true, then it's 10%. If it's false, then it's 6%. So you need to draw the diagram so you can get a good understanding of what you're actually trying to achieve. And what's important to realize here, and I'll just put these here, is that's the first if, and this one here is the second if. So we're now going to work using this logic and first build two separate if functions and then combine it. So what we'll do is we'll start here and you'll see I've got a place for the first if, the less than 10,000. So what we're trying to do is to create this formula and we ignore everything else. So I can go this way. So I'm going to say based on our drawing, look at that account balance. Is it less than, and in this case I'm going to just link to that cell there. We know based on our drawing, if it's true, it's going to be 15%. So I can either type in 15% or better, I'll link it here. If it's false, we can see there's another test. So what I'm going to do is, just as a place mark, for this false value, I'm actually going to just type the words second if. Okay, This is just a temporary thing. All we're doing is just telling ourselves that something's going to replace that. I'm going to say OK we can copy it down. Now we can build the second if and we can do this and we just ignore what's happening in the first if. We only look at this part of the if statement. So again I'll use my function wizard and I'm going to say the test here is, is the balance less than zero. So we're going to say look at the bank balance. Is it less than zero or whatever is there? If it's true, based on our diagram, it must be 10%. Put our dollar signs. If it's false, it must be 6%. I'm going to say OK. And I copy that down. Now we need to combine them because, in this particular case, because of the hierarchy, they do have to be combined. We cannot have this um, notification of a second if. You could go to this one and build it. But all we're going to do is I'm just going to copy this exact formula, put it in the combine section, and then work on it from here. So you'll see what the formula says. If A15 is less than B7, put in C7. Otherwise, the second if function. I'm going to go here. And this if function, ignoring the equal sign, I'm going to take all of that, copy it, escape, and I'll come here. And now I replace this place mark where I made reference to the second if with the formula from that second if. Click enter. I can copy it down and paste it. And what you'll see now is that it has correctly gone through and worked out what the numbers need to be. And these are no longer relevant. I can actually get rid of these because we've now combined the formula from two fairly simple ifs into a slightly more complex complex if. As mentioned repeatedly, however, we are big fans of keeping the formula simple. In some cases, you just can't help it. But if at all possible, try and keep them simple. Even this formula, which you saw was two simple formulas, it's quite difficult to figure out where the brackets go and what's happening in this formula without redrawing it in a picture.